Hi, 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 everybody. Welcome back and happy Wednesday. All right, guys. So we have special guest Kiki from the Talk of Shame, who is absolutely killing it on all things podcast, YouTube, everything. If you're not following her, you have to. But if you're not following her, then stick around to the end because we're going to give you all of the ways that you can. But she is back to recap not only last night's episode of Vanderpump Rules with me, but also The Valley. So we have lots to talk about, lots to discuss. Now, before we jump in, if you guys haven't already, go ahead, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And let's welcome Kiki. Hello. Hi. I missed you. I know. I was like in the middle of this crazy move. I'm still kind of, I'm in the middle of it still, but. How is it? I mean, I love my new place. I still have to, you know, get some furniture in. I have so many boxes to still unpack, but you know, I'm loving it. Wait, did you get the Sh Sheena Marie Good as Gold like album thing from BravoCon? She signed it for me uh, on the red carpet. Yeah. So this is going to be my little Kiki's Playhouse. I have, I actually have. You know, Shannon Bedore's uh, car pieces are going to go back here. I have a uh, Karen Huger's Maserati. What pieces. do you mean her car pieces? Well, uh, Shannon's is still on. Um, Shannon's is, a, is still un not packed yet or it's not unpacked. But like I had someone like pick up Karen Huger's like Maserati pieces from her DUI oh. and send it to me. So like <laughs> they're going to get little shrines back here. Where, where would you find that well, I literally the day of Shannon's DUI, I drove down to Orange County and like, you know, found the spot because I was actually trying to get ring camera footage to see the accident. But TMZ bro uh, beat me to it. Um, and so but there were still car pieces where she had, you know, ran into the house. So I just picked up some car pieces. And so then when I heard about Karen's DUI, someone who lived in the neighborhood was like, that's like right around the corner from me. And I said, can you go get pictures again? TMZ ended up getting the pictures from me but i said can you send me some of the car pieces that you find on scene because there's always car pieces left on scenes okay i know i'm a weirdo <laughs> i mean listen i have to say between you and ryan bailey you have to be two out of five of my favorite people that i collab with and i think it's funny because he had no problem when the whole girardi thing was happening he wanted the underwear so bad out of tom girardi's desk and he was like, I'm going to auction for this underwear. So I just, I really appreciate and admire the fact that you guys are relentless in this way of doing shit. You're like, I'm going to get it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Oof. All right. So I asked everyone, Kiki, um, which show they're preferring more as of right now between the Vanderpump Rules show and The Valley. And everyone still is preferring Vanderpump Rules. But where are you at? Really, I really am loving the Valley. I mean, you know, I like yeah. Vanderpump for other reasons. Like, I actually am enjoying both for different reasons. But I guess I'm more pleasantly surprised because I did not think that I would have much in common with the Valley. Because, again, going into it, I thought it was, like, going to be about suburban life. You know, I don't have kids. I'm not married. And so I was like, am I going to relate? And I was like, I actually really relate because you see that, like, grass is always greener, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I also think that for the Valley, too, it's like, I don't know. For some reason, I slept on that show. I was like, this is not going to be good, and I'm really enjoying it. And I think mm -hmm. that going into any new, you know, so many people, we're friends with Caroline Stanberry, Chanel Ayon, Lisa Milan, Caroline Brooks, Nina Ali, Sarah Almadon, like most of them from Dubai, and I was really championing the first season of Dubai. And so many people said, I was bored. I wasn't into it. But I think that it's because we don't know them. And I think the same thing for the Valley. However, I thought it was going to be like that going in. And people are really taking these people in like, oh my God, I relate to Jesse and Michelle. I relate to Kristen and Luke. I relate to Brittany and, you know, like nobody relates to Zach. Sorry, Zach. But, you know, you get what I'm saying. Well, yeah, and they're not holding back. Like, they are going full force, like, spilling tea, uh, you know, talking about, you know, having no sex, talking about how they don't want to, you know, they want divorces. Like, they just, like, from episode one, they were just, like, not tiptoeing around the drama. Yeah. Well, speaking of drama, I want to get back over to Vanderpump Rules for a second, Tom Sandoval talking about the whole situation. This was one of my biggest takeaways from last night 
was Tom Sandoval talking about the whole situation with the house with Ariana saying that at the point that he was trying to give an offer, he was thinking that he was in the right place. But now that she's willing to accept said offer, he doesn't know if he can afford it. And she's like, yeah, no shit. I think that he was in delusion about like what the value of the house would have been. I don't remember how many years ago exactly they purchased the house, I think it was but sick. obviously, okay. And so obviously there's been major upgrades. All of that furniture was, you know, very custom. And so I don't know the exact asking price that she wanted, but I think he was like delusional and thinking that she was going to like maybe give it to him for close to what they purchased it. Or I don't know. Yeah. Um, because the fact that he was asking Schwartz to move in and and Schwartz's rent would be six thousand dollars leads me to believe that I guess the mortgage was going to be twelve thousand dollars because I'm assuming you're splitting it equally. So I, I don't. Think it, I think it's seventeen. <laughs> seventeen. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I I don't know. He I doubt he would be able to afford that on his own. I mean, I don't know his finances, but that seems like a lot for a single person. Um, Can you imagine not not even including the assistant, the electric bill, the, the gas? Pool, maybe, yeah, I mean, yeah. Wi Fi. Not even including the the lawn maintenance, right? Yeah, seventeen pool, grand. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so your your monthly nut is probably easily twenty grand a month. Yeah, twenty. So two hundred and forty thousand dollars a month, which to survive in said house without spending any other money. Yeah, that's yeah. wild. Yeah, it also brings me to wonder because what was Lala's house like? Three point two. Her one, the one she purchased in the Valley, yeah, because I think that that one I think was like in the threes. I remember being like, oh, wow, like a three. It was like between three and four. It was like, th yeah. Okay, so between three and four plus her house in Palm Springs that she got less than a year before was like 1.3. So now you have almost $5 million in houses. Yeah. How the hell are you paying for that? I mean, that's what I was like. I was like, okay, she must have made a lot of money off of the merch. I mean, I, you know, I know her podcast is really popular. She's doing Amazon lives all the time and spilling tea. So she must be making a pretty penny off of those Amazon lives. So, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I really, really am. All right. So now going back to it with Tom and Ariana. The house still has not hit the market, right? But she bought another house. Do you... I'm trying to guess. Like, I'm personally guessing that he will eventually be exiting this house. I understand it's up to the courts, but what do you... Th do you think he'll stay in it or do you think he's going to have to leave? I mean, I think eventually he'll have to leave, but I think that... You know, depending on how what route he wants to go, because we know squatters have lots of rights in L.A. And in all honesty, he could squat there for probably over a year and he could just stop paying the mortgage if he wanted to. And he could live there for a long time. I don't know if he would do that because like as a public figure, I feel like he has too much of an ego to make it look like, you know, he's a squatter who's not paying his bills. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he could. So now as we like go through some of the conversations, I feel like not only do we have the Tom situation, but then we have Sheena being accused of cashing in on his misery with the diss track, Apples. So I don't know, for those of you guys who are not aware, um, I found out about Apples back in August, and that is when I hosted with Sheena her live show, because she was getting ready. She was kind of like getting into the mode to go do this in Australia with Brock. And she wanted to release her new single, Apples. A P P L E S. How you like them? Like that. Yeah. So at that time that she was trying to put that out there, I it was weird because I kind of pieced together that timeline with her and Ariana last night. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? But Tom thinks, again, we have another person who is monetizing off of my pain. And I'm like, yeah, she has a baby. You're the one who handed this to everyone. You signed up for this shit. They're all monetizing off of your pain. Ariana, yeah. Katie, James, Sheena, everyone. 
you're monetized. You went on fucking special forces. Yeah, I mean, and he was he was wearing in the episode um, a shirt that said dipped out. And like, I don't know. I don't think that was part of his merch line. But either way, like you're leaning into this narrative because we all know what dipped out means, right? Yeah, like you're definitely you're not trying to stop this from being a thing. If anything, you're encouraging said thing. Yeah, I mean, I think he's just like, he's really, he wants people to be on his side. And the only way he knows how to do that is like, play boohoo, woe is me. And like how, you know, I'm trying to do, trying to move on. And you guys keep harping on this and harping on, you know, profiting off my pain. And I'm just like, look, at this point. And again, this, again, they're filming only three or four months afterwards. Like what? What did he really expect to happen? You were reality stars. This is what we're going to do. And why are we still trying to put James and Tom together? That was the thing that was kind of surprising to me because, you know, James, I, I don't know why he's still trying to have a, a relationship in that way other than because it's for reality TV. Yeah. And I'm also curious, like, what Ariana thinks of that. Because obviously when it comes to, you know, Lala and Sheena, she is not happy about, you know, them trying to rekindle anything. So I'm curious how she feels about James. Like, maybe it's, you know, maybe she has a friendship with James, but maybe it's not as close as with the girls. So maybe that's why it hits different. Yeah. Well, but then I also noticed another person who obviously would be James' girlfriend, Allie. She got herself stuck in a little bit of a mess because she told Lala or she heard from Lala in her mind that Katie was miserable when she said unhappy. Yeah. And then she repeated the wrong thing. And it was like, <laughs> welcome to reality TV, babe. Yeah, you You better mean what you say and say what you mean and you better be spot on on that shit because if you're not all of a sudden you are the bad guy you are the villain in this uh story i i will say i empathize with ali because i am a pretty good story storyteller but sometimes the details especially if i i've been drinking like i may oh god you know, i have be, to worry about this <laughs> it may just become like i will hear you may say unhappy and i may hear miserable because in my mind it, it, it's the same thing um so in that respect i'm like well you know she did say she was unhappy and unhappy equals miserable and she said you were miserable <laughs> like i don't think you know i think that is what she heard and she wasn't trying to stir the pot now she was trying to stir the pot even bringing it to her in the first place place because if katie came to me and was like well, what were you guys talking about um i would just be like well you know lala just had some concerns about you i think that you guys should talk because obviously you have a long history I, like, I don't know if i would have said what was said see and i think that i would have been like that annoying asshole that would have been like katie like i heard you're miserable and <laughs> i just want to make sure that you're okay as a friend checking in who said i was miserable well lala said it but i didn't want you to say anything but like are you miserable? Oh my God, Lala, it's okay. She's not miserable. What the fuck? Like, you know? Well, and that's probably why you would get a season two and I would get like the Anna Marie exit. Like, girl, you're not bringing the drama. Get oh, out. no. <laughs> not the NECA. Wait, who else? Robin Dixon, right. Anna Marie, Crystal. Anybody else fired on the same day? <laughs> who? So so many people. Oh, that somebody was... corrected me and said Candace Diller Bassett was not fired. She did, she quit. She, decided, she did quit. Yes, she quit. Which I was like, if they fired her, that would be stupid, anyways, because she is the wordsmith of Potomac. Yes. Even though she is very problematic at times, I've already had my problems with Candace Diller Bassett, you guys, and oh, I am yeah. not going back. <laughs> yeah, she no. She will agreed. eat me alive. Oh yeah, she she DM'd me once and called me um, a troll, but a you troll? know, a, a troll. Yeah. Was that all she said? That uh, she said uh, uh, trolls like you have a special place in hell or something like that. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's very um, yeah. Like, there's but no she didn't, she didn't block me. She didn't block me, so I was like, I give her respect. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, she plays her part. Listen, there is no get if you you don't ever have to wonder where she stands no you just no she's like yeah. i'm gonna eat your ass alive i don't like you and i think that you're an asshole and it's mm -hmm. like okay okay yeah okay. but all right so moving on lala can't seem to make a little bit kind of 
of a big deal about the fact that Ariana was like, my house is a mess ever since Anne left. And she's like, this is a big moment for me, Ariana. It's a big moment for me. And really, like, your house is not available. And I'm sitting here thinking, like, girl, you are out here befriending the guy who literally cheated on her, trying to give him passes. You're hearing him out. You're showing up to her house to film with him. And then she doesn't want to give you her home. I wouldn't either. Well, and also, I just feel like if you always have access to Lisa Vanderpump's home, why would you even ask for anyone else's home? Like, I would have every single party at Lisa's villa. <laughs> what does she call it? Villa, villa Rosa. Rosa. Like, that yeah. would be, like, I wouldn't even have a second thought. Like, I don't need, like, Lisa. Party. Backyard. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And Lisa's home is so pretty, too. And also, Lisa right now, at this point, and this is just total outside looking in i have not spoken to somebody about this but watching her she really is her part has become less and less needed on the show yeah so i think that in moments like this when she can offer the space it's like that also reminds everybody like who show this really is you know yeah yeah she's not she's not so needed on vanderpump though and i think that's why you know Villa, Vanderpump Villa is happening because it's like a new crop of people that need her. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's just really, they're they're carrying their own weight at this point. I agree. Now, another thing that I had to ask you about Vanderpump Rules is I'm good friends with Logan Cochran, who is great friends with Ariana Maddox. And Logan was in last night's episode and he's at the bar when Tom walks in. And at the time, I don't know how much you remember of this. You might remember all of it, but when Tom, all of this came out, Logan not only broke his penis flu, mm. but he also was like going on social media and he's like, you're an asshole. You're a trash box. She's an asshole. Like all of these things. And then you have to sit there and still show up as manager at Tom Tom with his name on the building this is so uncomfortable yeah it's such a weird place to be because that is legitimately his job like he actually works there um yeah and Sandoval is his boss um but you're also reality stars and so you still have to make a show and so I guess you know at least Sandoval has been around long enough to know that like it is what it is. And ultimately, I don't even know if he actually has even firing power anyways in that place. That has the name on the door, but I don't think he has the power to fire anyone in there. I think that's purely a Lisa thing. Mm -hmm. You know, what's funny is his 2.5% and Tom Schwartz's 2.5%, based off of what I know, they've never seen a return in their investment to date, Right. So they both gave the $50,000, their names are on the building, and it's kind of like, that's good for you. It gave you a storyline. So instead of getting the money back in the restaurant where you put $50,000 in and you want to see a return on your investment, I think that there was some sort of unspoken, you're not really going to get this out of the restaurant, but what this is going to give you is longevity and a storyline going into multiple more seasons, which is going to give you six plus figures. So, yeah. you know. No, I mean it the fact that their name is even on the the, the door is solely because of Lisa because I worked in hospitality for a long time and I worked behind in the operations where I had to pay investors for the investment and a 2.5% investment trust me you don't even barely know their name let alone know let alone let be on the door and yeah I'm not surprised they have no return I mean restaurants it's really hard to make a profit and it could be years I mean a build out and you saw they were they pretty much gutted that place you know mm -hmm. a build out like that easily could have been $2 million. So already you're starting in the red of $2 million just for the build out. And we haven't even hired staff, you know, gotten the menu together, gotten, you know, and so every day you're operating um, and then you go through COVID. I'm sure there was like huge losses there. Like I, who knows if they'll ever see. I want to say it was about two and a half million on both sides. So okay. I think a total of 5 million, but then like you're saying, you don't even think about, the rent mm -hmm. for both sides, bringing in Chef Penny, having her curate a menu, bringing in the staff, having the staff train and all of that, the bartenders, having the bartenders play with different alcohols because we're testing drinks, we're testing food. That's all cost. Yeah. Guys, it's like if that's five million, I would say with everything 
at the end of the day, five and a half to five point seven five million dollars. Yeah, that's probably easily. what's invested. And easily. it's not like it ends there. It's not like they bought the building, yeah. right? And that, like, you still have rent. You still yeah. have all of this shit. Like, that's why it kind of baffles me. I think that Ariana and Katie's sandwich shop is about eight thousand a month. Okay, which is not bad. No, no, but that's definitely not what Tom Tom is. No, definitely no. not. <laughs> Tom Tom is also not the size of like somebody's dining room, and something about her is. Yeah. So differences, differences. All right. Now, as we continue to navigate through Vanderpump Rules, when we found out last night when Sheena was sharing the podcast episode, which was really interesting to see that this is what was going on on the other side of the Rachel sitting down with Bethany. What what was your take on that? Because if you go based off of Rachel going on the podcast, her and Ariana were never friends. They were only show friends. You know, like she and Sheena had a mutual relationship. All of these things. And then you see their side and you're like, Ariana has a good point. They were all over social media. And then producers who are shady as fuck, which I love, they played the clips and Raquel's like, these are my forever friends. Yeah. These are my people. These are the people who are going to be in my life. It's like. Well, that whole thing was weird because, I mean, again, we're watching this real time. And while this is airing, Rachel is on her Instagram live also taking these clips that have been edited and putting claim and basically then showing the podcast where, you know, she's trying to dispute this claim. Wait, she was doing this last night? Yeah, and it was being the thing is, I it was happening before the episode was even over. So I was immediately like, How did she have access to these clips so quickly to be because they were edited, they had captions on them, they were like it was clearly like they knew they were gonna launch this during the episode. So I was also like, now somebody said I guess there was a seven-minute preview previously, and that that's where those clips were pulled from. But I was just, just definitely like, how did how did Rachel get access to this this so quickly yeah um of course i don't think it did what she intended it for it to do i think she was trying to like you know show a point yeah um but i do I, look from just as a viewer and as a content creator i found that just to be such an interesting moment because we lived through the bethany three-part series podcast they didn't they never said bethany's name but we knew it was bethany's podcast yeah um and so just to watch their reaction to it is it, it's fun. It's fun to watch. Yeah. And it's also good to see, like, I like hearing the other side of it. And I also agree with Sheena. I spoke to Sheena when all of this came out and I was like, you know, this is coming, right? Like she's gonna file a restraining order. She's going to file charges. And Sheena was like, she would, she, I think really believed she would never do that. And I'm like, no girl, it's coming. And then lo and behold, here it came. Yeah. And then, She's like, you had sex in my bed. You paid a thousand dollars. You watched my cat for three weeks. And then I was looking, have you seen, do you remember the guy who was in the trailer last year, skinny dipping with Ariana, Brett? Yes. Okay. So Brett wrote a song about Katie. Yes. Brett is now on the outs. Okay. But Brett used to watch Sheena's cat. Sheena after he wrote the song about Katie, had to sort of push Brett out. Okay. If she wanted to salvage that relationship with Katie. Yeah. Um. Then Brett went on, because I saw him, I spoke with him during all of this as it was breaking. And he said, I spoke to Tom, I spoke to Raquel, and I said how disappointed I was, blah, blah, blah. And then I saw him at Tom's party. Yeah. And I was like, um, and then he went on to somebody's podcast and said, Lisa encouraged the staff to drink. And I'm like, that's not true. Mm. So I guess because I called it out as not being true, Pandora saw it and Pandora went to Tom, Tom and ripped Brett and Brett messaged me and was like, why are you, you made this something. I get that this is your business, but you made it something totally that it was not. And I said, no, I didn't. You said Lisa encouraged us to drink, which is not true. We were always under the understanding that if we drank while on the job, we would be fired. Yeah. That was always it. I saw three different people get fired for it. 
So what you're saying does not make sense. And he's like, I just want to say, like, I think it's we're friends. This is really fucked up. And I'm like, I think that you think this is fucked up because you got caught in the moment of recording a reality TV show where you felt like what you said was going to have some sort of weight to it. And it doesn't. And they didn't give you what you thought that the, they would give you as far as like screen time and stuff. And I think that the, it came back and bit you in the ass. So does he still work there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. At least he didn't lose his job, I guess. I mean, he didn't lose his job, but also if anybody would have lost their job, in my opinion, who I would have thought it would have been, would have been Logan for being yeah. like Tom Sandoval's a trash box asshole when Tom Sandoval's name is still on the front of the building, you know, but he didn't get fired. Lisa was like, this is great TV. <laughs> We're keeping you. Yeah. Oof. Okay. All right. So guys. We're going to move on from this over to the Valley. I have lots of questions. I don't even know where to start on the Valley. Most favorite character or participant of the show and least favorite. You know, okay. So I learned a lesson a little while ago is that oh I, I don't stand people anymore for season because by the time season two comes around, it's always so different. So I really do just use, I put everyone on equal footing and I have opinions and reasons I might like them maybe a little more than others. Cause it was like, I came into it thinking again, like, you know, I didn't know much about Janet and Jason and I thought they were going to be the most like kind of conventional couple. They actually are like way more fun than I thought they would be. Like I like, you know, like, you know, Janet has like her little like cutting thing. She'll say things. And so I was kind of like, okay, they are a little more spicy than I thought they would be. Yeah. Um, you know, Nia and uh, Danny, um, they're I like them. I really like what I really appreciate is like you want to find someone that loves you the way Danny loves me. Like he loves his wife, and yeah, I just like even though they're the most like there's n there's no there's nothing extra happening. I mean, she's going through postpartum, and so that's really vulnerable. Um, and again, like we have nothing in common because, you know, they have three kids, a minivan and like they're living their life. But I just it's nice to know that like there's people out there that like truly like love their partner as much as he loves her. So I enjoy watching that. Yeah. Um, you know, Jax and Brittany. I oh. mean, everything we've kind of always thought could be happening behind the scenes. It seems to be really happening. And so to, to watch it play out in real time. It's uncomfortable. It's actually like I get cringy and uncomfortable. And I also get cringy and uncomfortable with Michelle and Jesse because it's like, oh, my God, we are watching your marriages fall apart in front of our eyes. As a viewer, I am very much enjoying it. But I'm also cringing because I'm like, oof, this is tough. Well, and then I'm also watching and I'm like, when it comes to Jax and Brittany and she's talking about the fact that they don't have sex and then all of a sudden he's like, and I know it was a joke, but he's like, well, let's try the butt. I'm like, <laughs> I don't, I mean, I probably wasn't joking. I mean, but you know, <laughs> I'm what? like, sir, this is not helping your case at all. And no, it's oh. not. Um, and you know, I also think that Kristen is going to have a redemption season. I think it started, I, th I think it looked like it was going to start out rough for her, but I actually think that this season of the Valley could redeem her and her reputation. You know what I like about Kristen on this show is what? that I think that you can tell that she is a very seasoned vet on reality TV because when she shows up, it's not like she doesn't have to be to the nines at all times. She's very relatable. Like sometimes she just looks like I was in painter clothes. I was, you know, like my hair is down. It's a mess. It's this production's coming. And I kind of enjoy that because I'm like, it's just something that a lot of people like I am the first person. Jason gets on my ass all the time about this. He's like, Adam, you have to care about what you look like when you go out. And I'm like, no, I have Christmas pajamas on. It is only April. Like, <laughs> it is fine. I am good. And he's like, no, you look like garbage. Like, legitimately, <laughs> let's pull this shit together. And I think for her, she's like, this is what I look like. This is my man. It is what it is. But for Luke, I do. Let me ask you first. Yeah. Do you see red flags with Luke or do you like Luke for Kristen? 
I think that Luke took all the notes that Kristen, because like you said, she's a very seasoned reality star. And I think she went into it saying, you know, don't let them punk you. Don't be a bitch. And he took those notes and ran with it because he has come out every episode with all the heat. And it looks like he's about to expose Michelle for something. And, you know, they know that we know that marriage is over, obviously, in real time. But I mean, I'm in, I'm surprised for a first time reality, you know, star. And again, not being like a big name at all. I think he's doing a terrific job. And do you think that if you were in Michelle's position and you have a baby and you have this guy who's a good looking guy, but it seems like he's very into himself, it seems like he's very controlling. She has a lifestyle with this man, right? A very comfortable one. I think she has a very comfortable lifestyle, but I think that she, based on, you know, the way they're talking about her, I think that she has always been able to pull men that would be able to give her a comfortable lifestyle. And she said flat out, this was supposed to be like a hookup that turned into a marriage. Like, she is very much downplaying it. I think that Jesse wants to, you know, I think he loves her very much and wants to stay together. And I think she's the one that's like, oh, how did I get roped into this? Um, because I think she's always had options. Yeah. And I'm watching her and I'm like, do I hate the fact that you were called Republican aside? I don't care about that. I think that people should be entitled to their religious and political views and be able to do whatever they want. But racist is very, 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 very damaging. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I think that word gets thrown around way too loosely this day, these days. And I, I hate that because I think it like dilutes that like there are actual racists out there. Right. And I don't know. I mean, again, I haven't seen anything about Michelle. Like I can't I'm never going to say because you're a Republican that you're racist. Like those two are not the same thing. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it w- it wouldn't be fair. But again, I don't know enough about what else that the friend group knows about her that may have other reasons why it may have led down that path. And that's what makes me think that what Luke is about to drop or what he's alluding to dropping is the fact that I wonder, Michelle, were you talking to somebody else? Were you planning this (laughs) exit? Because a lot of people do that when they're about to leave somebody and they have a very comfortable life and things have a groove they don't want to necessarily leave unless they have another plan, right? Plan B. So what is plan B? Well, it could be diary. that that director at Chateau Marmont. I mean, whose name were Who they the bleeping fuck is out? The director. That's I'm, another wanna, thing. I'm gonna go hang out at Chateau Marmont every day. I mean, she probably won't do it now because it's like, but I'm like, I need to see who this director is now. I, I was interested. It was interesting because I was at Chateau Marmont like a couple weeks ago. I've never and- been. Oh, really? Okay. I nice? mean, it, you know, it's it's very Hollywood. Like, you know, I walked up. Like, know, paint the picture. What are we looking front. at? There's like a bunch of black cars. Like, you don't know who. I think that night, I can't remember somebody. There was uh, Baz Luhrmann was there. Like, there was like, you know, it's like people. Um, but I was like trying to like, the car, there was a car. Anyways, I'm not going to say the name. But I was like, oh, is this person here? Because it had a very specific. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Because I got not you can say whatever food. you want. I'm, I'm, I'm here food. for it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I am so curious because I do think that she is someone that sets herself up and is ready to you know not leave a situation until she's set up for the next one. And especially they work together. They're realtors. They have this real estate business together. I mean, I guess they can you know kind of do their own thing. But um, yeah. So. Can I ask you a question? Because of when mostly, like, most of the time when you go to parties or events or even BravoCon, and I've seen you at premiere parties, you always say that you find your spot, you sit there and you watch, right? You like, mm-hmm. you stake out some shit. Yeah. You're like, you find, you find the stoop, you sit there and you just observe until you're ready to leave. Is that what you do at Ch- Chateau Marmont? Um, I mean, I was having 
dinner the first time and the second time I was just having drinks. And so it's like, I'm always just like in that, in that situation, you kind of have to, cause you, you know, you're at your table and you know, you're trying to ear hustle and see like, and just look around and just like be a, you know, peeping Tom um, with parties. It's like, again, I'm mostly, I'm just like trying to like gauge the scene. And then if I find a situation that I want to be involved in, then I'll move in. Right. And I'll start a conversation. Um, but I'm usually just like, peeping and you know seeing what people are up to so okay all right i guess my next question for you is is that when you're there like if it's not an event that you know that you really like you're not going there because you know people are going to be there do you let yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit more and you go to potentially mingle or do you still sit back and you watch I like I I will mingle. I will mingle, but like, you know, depending on the event. Like, you know, I went to an event the other day, like, and I was just kind of like, mm, I just kind of want to chill and just like have a drink and like I might talk to the people that I recognize. Mm -hmm. But like sometimes I'm just not in the mood and I'm just mostly doing it just to like get out, see and be seen. Um, but if it's like a very like invite only event i'll do more mingling because like again that's the only way that you're going to you know get people on your podcast or get them to maybe like be a source for something or share something with you before they share it with someone else so do you think that you're a bad date i don't know i mean i i have i stopped dating so long ago no I'm i like, mean like when you bring people with you like do you sit there and like they're like girl i gotta show you this and you're like shh Cameron Diaz just walked in, but shut up. No, I mean, because usually if I, my plus ones are always someone who's in the industry. And so that we're both doing the same thing. And I'll, honestly, sometimes we'll each go our separate ways and come back together to be like, yes. well, what did you find out? So I never normally have a plus one that's not doing the same thing that I'm doing. Oh, smart. So we're very strategic about our efforts. Yes, of course. Yeah. I like that. And, okay. and it's usually a, it's usually a gay man who's always my plus one. Yes. Because I feel like we can divide and conquer in different ways. I was about to say, I think most of the time I see, most of the time that I've seen you out, I think you are with a gay man. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now going back over to the Valley, Lala Kent and Sheena. Now, Jax Taylor recently said that he feels like Sheena bought her house in Sherman Oaks because she wanted to be a part of the Valley, blah, blah, blah. Then Lala Kent was talking about in an interview or on Amazon Live, it was something like that, where she was asked about the Valley. And she's like, I'm not going to lie. If I were asked to be on the Valley, I would go to the Valley. Sheena did not have that same approach. But for you personally, does it make sense to you? I think that like anyone would be, it would be smart business to align yourself with the next thing right that it's in the universe because at some point Vanderpump has to have an expiration date or at least it has to have a rehaul because again none of these people are working in the restaurants there's like you know it, it isn't its original format so that would just be a smart business um to at least set yourself up for that um yeah. but they of course like I don't think that they're the decision maker so you know we obviously see them filming some scenes together and they're, you know, maybe they're trying to get a feel for it. And obviously the production team is trying to get a feel for it and how it would fit in. But um, you never know. I mean, because right now, again, everyone on screen right now is such a big personality. They might say, like, we don't even need extra person. Who knows? Well, and also, too, what I would imagine, and I don't know because I'm trying to base this off of when Roni was trying to do the reboot – and Jill Zarin wanted the same pay as everybody, but Luann felt like she deserved more. You know what I mean? And Jill Zarin was like, we're starting a new show, so I think it should be on an even playing field. I do wonder going into the Valley, were Kristen and Jane, or uh, Jax and Brittany paid the same as everyone? Or did they come in with a little bit more money? And if that's the case, and they're being honored based off of salaries that they left off on, well, then that means that Lala and Sheena would be very, very, very expensive to add to the mix. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, you know, I said this the other day. I was like, I feel like if production was like just more transparent with their money, it would just save them a lot of heartache too, right? You know, but it's just not how it works. You know, people have their own teams, their own negotiations. And so, you know, 
if if the cast aren't going to be transparent with each other, then you know you you never know. Um, I do, you know, I do think that the Ven- I mean, based on what I've seen so far, I do think the Valley will be renewed for a second season, and I imagine they'll get like a slightly bigger budget. But will it be, you know, Vanderpump budget? Um, I'm willing to say not at first. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. But we'll find out. Yeah, we shall find out. All right, guys. So if you haven't already, go ahead, pop off in the comment section. Let us know what you think. We are getting ready um, this weekend for everybody. I've had so many different people uh, reach out ask, asking, where's Jason? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. Just like Kiki, Kiki is in the middle of a move, and so are we, and it is wild, and I decided to add a dog on top of that. So, did I show you my new dog? No. Pippa. Oh my God, you're going to die. She is so (laughs) cute. Let me show you her. Yes, I want to see Pippa. What kind of doggy is Pippa? She's a Bernadoodle. A Bernadoodle. I've never even heard of that. Oh, is she not? Say hi. Wait, a burn, a Bernie, Burmese, and a a boy. What is it? Oh wow, big yellow. Okay. Yeah, so she's she's like Beethoven and Buddy. (laughs) I love that. Yeah, she's and she's only five months, and I fucked up, and I'm gonna tell you why. I had a woman who reached out to me on Instagram and she said, God told me to reach out to you and I live close to you and that I have a Bernadoodle and I wanted to see if you wanted to adopt her. I said, yeah, I got so excited. I said, I thought in my mind, I said, how big is she going to be? I said, how big is she? She said, she's five months, 55 pounds. I said, oh my God, she's going to be 55 pounds. She is five months old. Do you see the size of this? She's going to be huge. She's going to be massive. (laughs) And then, like, I asked all of these other questions, and at the end of the day, I just fucked up all over the place. (laughs) But we have her now. She's a part of the family, and it is what it is. So, yes. Long story short is what I was saying, guys, is there's 10 million things happening, and I feel like I thrive under chaos, and I just keep adding to my own plate. And that is what it is. But... (laughs) If they don't know Kiki, well, you let them know. And before you go after, I have to tell you something. But okay. if they don't know, well, you let them know. We'll start with Instagram. Yeah. I mean, Instagram, uh, the talk of shame. I do a lot of uh, stuff in my stories. I do a lot of stuff in my stories. Um, and then I keep my videos more for TikTok. I do. I, I sometimes do the same videos on TikTok here. But Uh, both TikTok and Instagram. And then obviously you can listen to me if you subscribe to my podcast, Pop Crime, um, where I, you know, break down, do deep dives onto pop culture, sort of scandals and true crime and all of the like uh, fun stuff. And then, you know, I'm on Sirius XM. I'm on Reality Check every Monday talking about all the reality stuff and uh, go in there. (laughs) Did you say YouTube? I am trying to start my YouTube, and that's why I'm also building this wonderful Kiki's Playhouse so that when I do my little YouTubes, we can talk about some of the fun collectibles that I have back here. She's like, all of a sudden, you guys find out that, like, somebody lost an embryo, and (laughs) Kiki's going to come with a jar, and she's going to be like, oh, my God, this is the real housewives of so-and-so. This is their left testicle. What? It's like, where did you get that? She's like, I know a guy who went and actually broke into cedar sinai and they stole the testicle and yes here we are in the playhouse so and then hopefully my lighting i'm gonna get my lighting together i'm gonna work on that today because the the sun is shifting i'm getting more shadowy as we go on hey it happens but (laughs) with that guys pop off in the comments section smash that like button show some love i see all of the comments thank you great show today thank you thank you make sure you go follow kiki I see all of the really, really nice comments about Pippa. Yes, I do have a small horse, but I will post more photos of her. Um, But I love you guys, and we will see you next time. Bye, guys.